Hello students, let us learn today about types of numbers. We use numbers for various purposes like counting numbers or measurement of perimeter or area. These numbers can be classified in some types. So first of all, we'll study those types in which these numbers are classified. The first type of a number is a natural number. The set of natural number is denoted by a letter N. These are the numbers which are used for counting objects. That's why they are also called as a counting number. So this is the set of natural numbers. If we add zero to natural numbers, that is zero, one, two, three, four, and so on. These are called as whole numbers. The set of whole numbers is denoted by a letter W. The next type of number is integers. So in this, as we can see, zero, all the positive numbers and all the negative numbers. If we collect these all numbers, we get a set of integers, which is denoted by letter I. Then we have next type of a number that is the set of rational numbers. So if we have to define rational numbers, any number in the form P divided by Q is called as a rational number. And the next is the set of real numbers. Today we are going to learn real numbers in detail. Now if we have these types of numbers. So as we can see, any natural number is a whole number because if zero is added to natural numbers, we get whole numbers. Similarly, all the whole numbers are integers because integers contains zero along with all the positive numbers, which are the whole numbers. So in this way, we can have this relation that N is a subset of W that is the set of natural numbers is a subset of set of whole numbers. Similarly, set of whole numbers is a subset of set of integers. Set of integers is a subset of set of rational number. And the rational number is a subset of real numbers. So this is the relation we have amongst all these types of numbers. Our main topic today is the real numbers. Real numbers are classified into two main categories. That is rational numbers or irrational numbers. We are going to learn these two types of numbers in detail. So we'll start with rational numbers. To define rational numbers, we can write a set of rational numbers in a set builder form as set of rational numbers is equal to in curling bracket P divided by Q such that P Q belongs to I. That means P and Q must be integers and one condition is given here that Q must not be equal to zero because if Q will be zero, that will not be a rational number. That's why this is the way by which we can define set of rational numbers. So in simple form, we can define rational numbers as any number which is expressed in the form of P divided by Q, where Q must not be equal to zero and P and Q are integers, then such a numbers are called as rational numbers. We'll have some examples of it. For example, 2 divided by 3 minus 7 divided by 11 minus 25. So these are all rational numbers. Now, as we can see the last number minus 25, we may wonder that it does not have a denominator. And we have studied that a set of rational numbers must be in the form P divided by Q. So it must have the denominator. But we know that if any number which does not have a denominator, it is expressed as minus 25 divided by 1. So any number or any integer can be expressed in the form of P divided by Q. That's why any integer is also a rational number. So these are some examples of rational numbers. Now we'll study the next concept, order relation on rational numbers. Suppose if we have two rational numbers given, P divided by Q and R divided by S, where Q must be greater than zero and S must be greater than zero, then we can have the order relation between these two. For that we have to use one formula. We have to multiply the numerator of the first number and the denominator of the second number so as to have the product P into S. And then we have to multiply Q and R. So in this case, we get two products. If these two products are equal, then in that case, we can say that these two numbers are also equal. That is if P into S is equal to Q into R, then P divided by Q is equal to R divided by S. So this is the first case we can get. Suppose if the first product is greater than the second one, that is P into S is greater than Q into R, 
then the first number must be greater than second that is p divided by q must be greater than r divided by s in the same way we may get the result that p into s that is the first product is less than the second then in that case the first number is less than the second number so if p into s is less than q into r then p divided by q is less than r divided by s so these are the formula by which we can decide the order relation between given rational numbers now let us illustrate these three rules suppose there are two numbers given p divided by q and r divided by s so this is the first rule by which we can have the order relation between these two that is if p into s is equal to q into r then both the numbers must be equal so suppose there are two rational numbers are given 2 divided by 3 and 4 divided by 6 so for these two rational numbers if we take a product of 2 and 6 that will be 12 so if we take another product 3 into 4 that will be also 12 so in this case these two products are equal that's why these two numbers also must be equal that is 2 divided by 3 is equal to 4 divided by 6 so this is the illustration for the first rule let us have the illustration for the second rule second rule is if the first product is greater than the second the first number is greater than the second for that one let us have two numbers 4 divided by 5 and 3 divided by 6 these are the two rational numbers if we take the product of 4 and 6 and the second product of 3 and 5 so 4 into 6 that's 24 and 3 into 5 that's 15 so as we can see here first product is greater than the second one so if the first product is greater then the first number must be greater and out of these two the first number is 4 divided by 5 that's why 4 divided by 5 is greater than 3 divided by 6 so this is the second rule we have the third rule the third rule is if first product is less than the second one first number is also less than the second one so for that let us consider two numbers 7 by 4 and 9 by 5 if you take product of 7 and 5 and 4 and 9 so here 7 into 5 that's 35 and 4 into 9 that's 36 so as we can see 35 is less than 36 that is the first product is less than the second product that means the first number between these two must be less than the second number so first number is 7 by 4 that's why 7 by 4 must be smaller than 9 by 5 so this is how we can have the order relation by using these three rules now let us have some properties of rational numbers suppose there are three rational numbers given a b and c then we have the following properties of those rational numbers the first property which is named as a commutative that is about addition so no matter in which we take the addition this property means the addition of two rational numbers is in respect to the order we take that is a plus b that must be equal to b plus a so if we take these numbers in any order and if we add them the answer must be same so this property is called as a commutative in the same way multiplication is also there that is a into b is equal to b into a the next property is associative suppose there are three numbers given if we take the addition of first two numbers firstly and then add the third number it must be equal to the addition of last two numbers and if we add the first number to it so it will not make any difference if we take these three numbers and if we take addition in any order the answer must be same that is into bracket a plus b plus c that must be equal to a plus b plus c so the same rule is here for the multiplication next property is identity if we add 0 to any rational number we'll get the same number that is a plus 0 is equal to 0 plus a is equal to a and for multiplication if we multiply any rational number by 1 we get the number itself that is a into 1 that's equal to 1 into a that's equal to a and the inverse rule is there that is if we add additive inverse of any rational number that is a plus minus a that must be equal to zero in the same way if we multiply any rational number by its multiplicative inverse the answer must be 1 that is a into 1 by a that is equal to 1 one condition must be supplied here that a must not be equal to 0 so 
So these are the some properties of rational numbers. So let us have the illustration of all these properties. First of all, commutative property. Suppose if we have two rational numbers, one divided by two and three divided by four. If we add one by two and three by four in this order, that is firstly, if we take one by two plus three by four, and then if we take three by four, and if we add one by two to it, we get the same answer that is 10 by eight. So either one by two plus three by four or three by four plus one by two, we'll get the same answer 10 by eight. So this is the commutative property. In the same way, if we have these two numbers and if we take their multiplication by having this order that is one by two into three by four, and 3 by 4 into 1 by 2 will get the same answer that is 3 into 1 that's 3 divided by 2 into 4 that's 8. Then we have the property associative property. So let us have an example of the associative property. Suppose there are three numbers given 1 by 2, 3 by 4 and 5 by 6. If we firstly add 1 by 2 and 3 by 4 in bracket and then if we add 5 by 6 to it, we will get the same result if we add 3 by 4 and 5 by 6 firstly and then if we add 1 by 2 to it so we'll get the same answer in the same way the associative property is there so there is example of associative property of multiplication so if we take same three examples 1 by 2 3 by 4 and 5 by 6 so the same rule is here for the multiplication also so these are the some properties of rational numbers